Hi everyone, this is the Chuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today I'm sitting down with my friend Kat Nelligan, who is the creator of a really cool podcast that I like called thecreativeintrovert.com. Kat's also my, sort of like my social media manager. She's been helping me with my social media game for like the past year. And um, Kat has been collecting all of the questions that have come from my YouTube channel over the past six months or so, and we've decided to do a series of interviews where Kat's basically, basically going to um, ask the questions that all of you have been asking. We're going to kind of do it in interview style. Um, and I know that Kat's been a student in my classes, so we'll use some of these videos to kind of promo what my classes are about so you can learn more. And also just try to field all the different questions that you have. And the questions that Kat has too, because Kat's a really um, intelligent student and often asking some of the best questions in my classes anyway. So it's been, it's just been really nice to work with you, Kat. And I'm, I'm glad to uh, hang out and talk today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Also ask some of the stupidest questions. So I'll just add that in as well. <laughs> um, so I thought we could start by talking about um, advice for people who are just beginning to learn astrology. And I guess my first question is, what mistakes do you see beginners make when they first kind of decide? Astrology is something that I want to study and learn more about. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I mean, probably the biggest mistake that I made was, um, well, there's a couple, you know, and, and I think I made them and I think everyone makes them and it's normal. It's not like, you know, anyone should be scolded for this, but um, one is not allowing yourself to get too overwhelmed because in the beginning, when you're exposing yourself to astrology, it's like bushwhacking a trail. You know, there's a ton of information out there. Everyone, a lot of people are self-taught and sort of in good and bad ways. Sometimes there's self-taught people who are excellent. There's a lot of self-proclaimed experts who really maybe don't even know what they're talking about. Um, you know, anyone can go to a new age shop and pick up a deck of tarot cards and start flipping cards and reading for people. And they'll just be like, oh, my intuition. Or So it's, there's a, like, almost like a dangerous overwhelm. There's a ton of information. There's a feeling of being on your own. Um, and I think the mistake that a lot of people make is to get just really to feel really flooded and overwhelmed and then just give up because you're not sure what's right or you're not sure what's true or you're not sure how to organize all the different information you're getting or how to make sense out of it. And so people give up and they think, oh, there's, you know, astrology is just a morass. But uh, actually, um, there, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of really good traditional structured um, more disciplined approaches that can help you organize and find your way through and, and cut a path um, that's unique to you, but that calls on, you know, thousands of years of tradition. And so I think maybe the first thing that people do is they just get information overwhelmed and they give up too easily. That'd probably be the first thing I could think of. Yeah, I definitely experienced that. Um, and in a way it was amazing because I realized how vast astrology was, um, but it was also really off-putting. You know, if you want to learn to master something, how can you do that if you've got all of these books, some of them telling you conflicting things? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, um, that's one of the reasons that I became interested in ancient Hellenistic astrology is that I was, I was practicing for a long time. I was winging it. I, I wasn't, I was listening to lectures here and there and reading stuff online and, but there were so many disparate opinions and so many different craft elements. And it's kind of like, you know, I, I feel like I was making stuff up as I went and I knew there was something to to it or I wouldn't have been doing it. You know, I knew there was this astrology was real and it had a real impact on my my heart and soul. But yeah, it was just a lot of clutter and a lot of chaos. Um, eventually, to for me, the thing that helped make sense of it was to um, find teachers and not just one, you know, not just one class, one teacher, <clears throat> but a number of them that helped to start organizing what I was learning, grounding it and helping me refine and focus it. Um, and I think that that's, that's probably the step that a lot of people miss is, you know, um, we may have some natural ability to work with people or to counsel people, or we may be naturally intuitive on some level. Um, and we may not necessarily trust like, uh, uh, like there's a lot of like shady religious authority figures out there. And um, we maybe have been hurt by some of that in the past. And so we think I'll just do it on my own. Um, I can figure this out but it really does help to have teachers in the plural and different classes and, and even colleagues and friends that you can learn with in an environment together. So I recommend doing that versus going it on your own or, 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 not, or giving up because you get overwhelmed, either one. Yeah, that's something that I found was really helpful that I didn't expect. Um, I knew I wanted you know, to study a course so I could have the structure and to go step by step. You know, often if you've just got a book, that's really hard to force yourself to do. Um, 
obviously having a teacher so that I could actually ask questions and get a reply, but the community as well. So having other colleagues who are and students who are going through the course with me has been really great. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the teachers that have made the biggest impact on me have been, um, I mean, I've always been a little bit more solitary in the way that I study. I'm kind of a hermit in that regard. Um, but, you know, having been in a larger community of craft <clears throat> where there's people essentially studying the same tradition, the same language and learning to see and break charts down in similar ways and participating in groups like that through Facebook and, um, and so forth with different teachers I was studying with especially when I started focusing on Hellenistic astrology and horary, um, that there was no substitute for seeing seasoned practitioners practice. There was no substitute for, you know, hearing about how to apply or integrate these um, ancient doctrines and teachings with, you know, modern psychological approaches to astrology. Uh, so anyway, I mean, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because I know we wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, my course at some point in this interview, but the, I think the most important thing is just trying to find some structure, some support, some community, some help so that you're not just completely on your own. And when people do that, they'll tend to gravitate, unfortunately tend to tend to gravitate uh, sometimes towards the things that are most comfortable and easiest. And we do need to be pushed a little bit in how we study and in the in our mind and our, our learning and even in our emotions and our hearts. And it's really hard to do that just as hard as it is to read your own birth chart. So like a lot of people will study astrology and they'll just be looking at their own birth chart in order to learn astrology. In some ways that's the worst way to learn astrology, even though we always will look at our birth charts as we go, cause we're curious, but it's really hard to be objective about your own birth chart. So similarly, like if you're only studying astrology in the beginning uh, you know, kind of looking at your own chart and trying to apply what you're learning to your own chart. And you don't have lots of charts to look at. Uh, that's really hard too. And that was a mistake that I made was I kind of tried to learn astrology primarily by applying everything that I was learning only to my own chart. And you really get stuck in a kind of hamster wheel of, you know, worry and self-focus that way. And um, uh, it often doesn't help us to to learn either. Yeah. And in terms of all the different um, types of astrology out there, do you find that people, I mean, I know that for me, uh, I, I was kind of on the path of just anything. Like I didn't really know enough about Hellenistic, for example, when I first started to research astrology. Um, but you had a, a journey where you were studying one type of astrology and then your own questioning led you somewhere else. Like I was basically wondering if you have any advice for people who are a bit overwhelmed with the type of um, paths of right. astrology. Yeah, I mean there's there's so many different schools of astrology. Astrology is like, you know, 2500 years old arguably and um it uh there's many different branches of astrology. It's not just birth charts, right? There's natal astrology, there's um horary astrology, there's mundane astrology, there's electional astrology, there's medical astrology. So, and each one is like its own field unto itself, though they'll often traditionally draw on the same language and many of the same techniques. Um, but there's development of expertise in all of them. And so, um, you know, I like to tell people that like ancient astrology, when you learn ancient astrology, it's a bit more like studying Ayurveda or acupuncture. It's, it's much more disciplined, systematic, and sort of rigorous, and it takes a lot longer to, to learn. Yet I argue that you become much better astrologer. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I love to pitch Hellenistic astrology, but yeah, so there's psychological astrology in the modern era, which came about through Carl Jung, a lot of influence of Carl Jung, and people started using the birth chart basically as a tool in therapy um, or as a tool for you know, analysis, self-analysis. And um, that has a beautiful you know, kind of new history um, that's still developing. There's modern evolutionary astrology, um, which I don't I don't practice, but I did when I first started. And basically, like another element of the bushwhacking is coming to realize there's all these different forms of astrology. And um, to me, the maybe the most basic division of forms is what we would call modern versus classical or modern versus traditional. And unfortunately, most of the popular information that's out there on astrology is not informed by, you know, the vast history of 2,500 years of 
uh, astrological tradition, which is not to say that everything in modern astrology is just like bogus or anything. It, it's um, beautiful in its own respect, but modern astrologers literally didn't have uh, a lot of connection to their roots. We're going to be doing a separate video about this at another time, but the modern astrologers didn't have a lot of information or understanding about the classical roots. And so in some ways they were kind of, you know, uh, hot wiring the car and uh, that came with some cool innovations and it came with some problems and deviations from the tradition that have really in some ways kind of muddy the water. So I think that another thing that's really good about, um, you know, don't let yourself get overwhelmed and find teachers and community and structure to learn in is that you're also going to start seeing some of the differences between modern and classical forms. And um, that can, whether, regardless of what form you land on, just being aware of some of the different historical teachings about astrology and techniques, uh, you become a lot more well-rounded. And that's basically, you know, shameless self-promotion. That's basically what I'm really passionate about personally, because I was practicing one modern form and really felt like I was lacking a, a grounded understanding of ancient astrology. And I also felt like, although the astrology I practiced was really rich psychologically, that it was missing a predictive element. So when I went back to the roots and I got a bunch of teachers in classical astrology, so to speak, and started diving in there, um, I just, I realized I didn't know what I didn't know. And my astrology practice improved a great deal by becoming a lot more formal and a little bit more rigorous with my um, training. Um, so I think that that's a, a thing that a lot of people when they're coming in also, they don't know how vast it is. They don't know how many different forms there are, and they don't know many of the key distinctions between forms and techniques, understanding all of which, regardless of what form you land on is really, really important. Yeah. And I think you've had, um, you've compared like studying Hellenistic astrology to learning an instrument and learning about musical theory. Uh, and then you can sort of break the rules and play around with them a bit more, but having the kind of theory down is really important. Yeah. I mean, I would say that this is another problem. I mean, speaking to the initial question that, ha that was raised for this, per like this particular talk that we're doing together, which was what kinds of mistakes do beginners make? And like I said, like we don't, a lot of times it's just the beginners don't know what they don't know. And I'm talking about myself now and where I was too. Most people have a list of things that they understand about the houses, the signs, the planets. Unfortunately, in modern astrology, many of those doctrines or teachings are not rooted in the tradition. So people are telling you that the third house means something that it doesn't, or that it means something like siblings because it has an association with Gemini. And actually the third house has no association with Gemini. Um, or that the sixth house has something to do with Virgo, has nothing to do with Virgo. Um, so, you know, when you learn ancient astrology, one of the things that you're doing is you're learning the underlying rationale behind everything from houses, signs, planets, aspects, dignities, and you're learning how they fit together, why they fit together, what the original metaphysical and philosophical and spiritual rationale was behind it. Um, that gives you a skeleton key to being able to use astrology in a way that's much more intuitive and natural, just like studying musical theory gives you uh, a freedom and a flexibility, even though it feels kind of structured and hard at first, it gives you the ability to range freely across the, um, you know, across the instrument, so to speak, um, in a way that other people can't because they never take time to understand how everything works, the, the kind of craft language behind a musical scale or, or whatever. Um, and so, you know, that's what I'm really, really passionate about teaching because I became like just 10 times better an astrologer and more intuitive in the way that I work because I went back and really studied the deep, you know, esoteric rationale behind everything, which is 10 times more efficient and interesting and inspiring actually than just memorizing lists of adjectives or topics for houses or whatever. Like how, why do, why did houses ever become a thing? What is a house? Where did the idea of a house even come from? How are they organized? Why are these topics associated with these houses? Uh, same thing with signs, you know, like that. So it's, um, it's, it's a very deep and beautiful language that, um, you know, if you take the time to learn that underlying theory, you actually become freer in, in the way you practice. Yeah, absolutely. So if somebody was just um, curious, astro curious right now, and they're looking to deepen their studies, maybe give us, I don't know, one to three practical tips that somebody could take um, to get a better grip on astrology and really cultivate that relationship with it. 
Well, the first one is to limit your field of focus. Um, find, you know, three or four astrologers that, you know, I mean, this, it depends really on kind of how beginner you are. If you're super, super beginner, I guess the first thing to do would be, you know, just read. There's some really good basic textbooks that you can read. I'll pull one of my favorites right now, actually. This is like probably my favorite beginner's textbooks. It's called Astrology for Yourself by Demetra George. Um, and I just think that if you're brand, brand new, then you just need to get some really basic stuff going and that's fine. And, and there are some really good beginner textbooks like that. Astrology for Yourself by Demetra George is my favorite for beginners. Um, but <clears throat> there's there's, I mean, there's so many good beginner textbooks. There's a book that's a little bit more sophisticated beginner textbook called Horoscope Symbols by Robert Hand. Anyway, if that's if you're like super beginner, then I would start by just trying to uh, familiarize yourself with the language and the glyphs and, you know, just being able to kind of identify things that you're looking at in a birth chart, signs, planets, houses, the glyphs for all of them, the numbers for all of them, aspects. So, but once you kind of have that stuff down, you, you've kind of, most people get exposed to that. Um, you know, and, and uh, have some understanding of that as they're moving along, then I would say limit your field of focus. And by that, I mean, start figuring out which voices or which approaches to astrology really speak to you. And um, make sure that you don't have too many streams of input coming in. Um, it's like that saying, you know, if you want to get water, uh, if, you if you dig a bunch of shallow little puddles, uh, it won't get you there um, as as uh, as well as digging deep and going straight down in one direction. Then you'll hit a well, or you'll you'll find a well. Uh, so similarly, like you have to find maybe a, a smaller group of voices that you like and listen to, and kind of help you hone your focus. Uh, and maybe there's a couple of teachers that that speak to you, and they have roughly similar ways of practicing. I find that if you have vastly different approaches to astrology, um, like you have an evolutionary astrologer and a classical astrologer and a psychological astrologer and all these different things, um, the input channels will get jammed. So I feel like you kind of got to take a period of time to figure out what you like and then find the voices that resonate, narrow it down to a few, and then read their bibliographies. You know, when they're doing presentations, which people did they read? Which people did they study? So in that way, you you kind of narrow your focus. So that would be the first tip. I think the second tip would be, um, you know, uh, if you don't already, maybe this is the first one, actually, maybe if you don't already know the different types of astrology that are out there, do a little bit of research, you know, so you can find out what they are and what, what kinds of astrology they are and how they differ and what appeals to you. Uh, there's evolutionary astrology, there's psychological astrology, there's classical astrology, there's so many forms um, that I'm not even mentioning, but getting some familiarity with what kinds are out there so that you can also help kind of start to focus a little bit more. Um, so both of those focusing projects, I think, help. Um, and then the third one would be, you know, read books. Books are good to read and listen to lectures, and that's good. But, the, you know, there's so many good, like for ancient astrology, I, you know, in my class, I have textbooks that I recommend for every class that they read. Ancient Astrology by Demetra George. Uh, Hellenistic Astrology by Chris Brennan, the Heavenly Spheres on the Heavenly Spheres by Avalar and Ribeiro. Um, there's others, but those are there's good textbooks that are really going to solidify your understanding. Shows that you might like, like the Astrology Podcast, is you know one of my favorites because it, it's it's up my alley. It's Hellenistic Astrology, um, so there's stuff like that. Uh, but then um, you know maybe the thing that takes it over the top is you know like we said earlier, like make sure that in addition to kind of narrowing your focus of what you what you are interested in, who you learn from and study with, that you actually get tangible community learning experiences, tangible teaching experience, you know, with teachers, actual people that you're learning and studying with, and groups of people who are practicing in the same ways, using the same techniques. Otherwise, uh, people tend to suffer from feeling like they don't know what they're doing, then they get overwhelmed, and then they quit. Yeah, completely. Um, I, yeah, like I said, it wasn't until I started to take your course that um, I felt like I could actually do this really complex thing, um, which is astrology. Um, just before we wrap up, I wondered if you could share some of the common challenges that people who actually do take that next step and start studying with you um, sometimes face. 
Yeah, well, I mean, my course is one of many courses. So as much as I like to promote my course, I mean, more generally, I just want to be a resource for people to learn astrology because I feel like astrology is first and foremost um, a spiritual practice that is meant to attune our hearts and minds to um, the larger divine whole of which we're a part. So, I mean, that's really the bottom line for me. And so I think if a teacher is doing that for you, if a course is doing that for you, um, you know, it doesn't really matter whose it is. Um, But in terms of people taking my course, um, like what was the question? The question was, what, what would they, might, what might they struggle with? Yeah. 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 I mean, probably the, you know, it's a commitment. It can be a little overwhelming to, you know, it is more like learning acupuncture or it's more of a science. It's more of a, ancient astrology is more of a karmic science. I always say that. And so the, the rigor, the commitment time and mentally, um, you can feel a little stupid at first and that's totally normal and you're not stupid, but you can feel that way at first when you're studying ancient astrology because it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's really, really dazzling. And, um, I still feel, you know, pretty, I can still feel kind of stupid sometimes, you know, and that's normal. Um, I I shouldn't say sometimes I should say all the time because every week I'm faced with things that I don't know how to answer. I'm digging back into the ancient texts. I learn things by teaching, you know, all the time. So it's normal to feel overwhelmed, but there is a steep learning curve. Um, people who know something about modern astrology but have never studied classical astrology in some ways have it worse off than people who are totally brand new. Because when you're totally brand new, you're starting from the beginning. When you have already had some modern astrology but have never studied ancient astrology, it's a bit like you're having to relearn everything. Um, and that can, that can be a little intimidating for people at first. Um, but I've noticed that people who stick with it and care more about their interest in astrology, care more about their passion and fascination than they give room for the voice of frustration within themselves, they do fine. They get over, there's humps, there's ups and downs. You get through them, you keep going. And before you know it, you're like, wow, I can actually do this. This is amazing. And so if people stick with it and let their passion be louder than their frustration, um, you know, it's just like learning any, any other language. When you get thrown in at first, you're like, you know, like I was in, when I was in Peru for the first time, it was like baño, you know, you know what I mean? Like that's it. And, um, you know, I, the bathroom and that's all I know how to say. Um, but you stick with that frustration and before you know it, you know, you're, you're speaking the language. And so it's, it's a process everyone goes through. Yeah. And you remind me that, um, I guess it's the beginner's mind that is kind of a good attitude to take in. Um, I know that I was making the mistake of getting a lot of, um, of the modern interpretations mixed up like you said if somebody has studied even a little bit of modern astrology um, it can be quite challenging coming into a traditional um, training yeah I mean you're you're just relearning so many things and you know your knowledge of astrology will serve you eventually but in some ways it's like you have to be stripped back of thinking that you knew a lot of things that it turns out from the classical perspective you didn't and um And that's hard for people, especially when people get really attached to their birth charts, because there's a lot of perspective changes in ancient astrology, like whole sign houses, um, you know, different ways of measuring aspects, uh, different meanings of houses, different, different meanings of signs, different meanings of planets. Um, And, uh, but I believe it's also, I wouldn't be doing if I didn't think it was um, significantly more accurate, especially on a predictive level. So I, um, I just, I, I think it's, uh, there's a lot more to be said, but I know we're going to cover some of this in another video. So maybe we'll just end it there. Sure. <clears throat> cool. Well, um, thanks everyone for listening. I hope that you enjoy this. Kat and I are going to be doing a bunch of more interviews together, taking questions from you guys. If you have more of them, feel free to put it in the YouTube uh, comment section and tell us what have some of your challenges been as a beginner? Uh, what are some of the, what is some of the learning curve that you've run into as a student of astrology? We'd love to hear from you guys and make sure you check out Kat's awesome show, The Creative Introvert. Uh, you can go to her website, thecreativeintrovert.com. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.